Okay, so we're at the BWR World Movie Premiere. And photo exhibition. Yep, photo exhibition is going on now. Eight and a half years of the Belgian waffle ride. So where did this idea of the movie come from for tonight? I think every year we would sort of document the silliness of the race. And so each year it would sort of get longer and better and more interesting that I love, you know, creating stories and making films or TV shows or whatever we end up calling them. It just seems like this thing uh, deserved that documentation. And and this year we took a different, more um, comical approach to it. So there's this theme to it. It's the Mystery Science 3000. Uh, here's this serious documentary. And then we have a cast of characters in the foreground that poke fun at it from every angle. So it's comedic. Sort of this juxtaposition of, wow, it's a really hard race. Uh, but... It's just bike racing, you know? So how can you take it too seriously? So we, we take those two things to the extreme. Super rad, hardly hard, difficult bike race that we document, and then we poke fun at it from every angle. And uh, at the end of it, people clap and say, that was rad. So, and then like, we got the photo off going on right now, photo gallery style. Uh, Jay Cornette's really had that up. What, you know, is this kind of like something you're just trying to show off to everyone with the years of it? Like, do you plan on doing more stuff like this down the road? I mean, obviously it's all a little new, but like, where do you see like stuff like this going? Yeah. So next year we're going to make a, let's call it a 75 minute film. So, so sort of a proper uh, full length feature. This one's I think 46 minutes. Um, next year will be a full documentation of the women's race, full documentation of the men's race. And then interspersed in it, the spice of it will be these vignettes that we do with each athlete. So you can imagine one of the most prominent triathletes uh, is now gravitating to gravel. So what is her experience going to be like and how do we how do we tell her story through the prism of the BWR and her approach to it? Just as we would do with, say, a CEO of a major company that's, you know, raised his hand to take on the challenge. Not to mention the various pros from the world tour that are now gravitating towards it. And then in all these other cast of characters that we've watched race their bikes on TV all over the world. And now they're actually in front of us or with us doing the Belgian waffle ride. So you can imagine those vignettes almost like paralleling what Iron Man has done over the years. And here's the race, but then we're going to break it up. I tell you the story about this this incredible athlete that's, you know has many challenges in life many more that would you know get in the way of them doing the iron man and yet they're doing it and inspiring us in ways that the top athletes in the world just can't so speaking on like 2020 i feel like kind of since registration opened it's kind of been you know the talk now like you know it's kind of all hands on deck you know for 2020 like how how has it gone since you know it was like all right registration's open now we're really focused on 2020 like how, how's that all looking and what's coming together for next year well i think the the takeaways are we added um 750 spots so we're at 200 or 2500 spots that can race it um there'll be a deep waiting list so i think that's kind of interesting you know we could uh if the county let us Um, have more people race our gravel event than any other gravel race in the North America or the world. Um, On top of that, there's no tour of California next year. So what are those athletes going to do with that window? Are, are we, our, our event is only a week in advance of what would typically be that, that uh, tour. So which of those athletes and teams are going to join in our fun? and um, do so with uh, either individually or as a team. What does that team dynamic look like? And how does that change the complexion of the waffle? Uh, So I think those are dynamic things. Massive growth, incredible growth in the depth of the professional field, incredible growth uh, in women's, the women's field. 
so those things are you know romantic and you know I would swear right now with an expletive that expresses radness but it's rad so like tonight's the movie premiere what uh what do we have going on from tonight till the BWR as far as like what else is coming out yeah so tonight's like this uh eight year eight and a half year retrospective on the genesis of the BWR to where we are now going to year nine so there's images from the first event where there was 136 athletes all of them individually invited uh none of them paid their only payment was to share with the world how rad it was if they had a good time I think 18 of those people didn't finish, so we had 118 finishers. And then the evolution has been, you know, year two was 336 people, and they all paid, and then it was 600 and some odd. And it continues to grow and capture people's imaginations along the way. I think the interesting thing, too, is the course changed every year. It got longer, it got dirtier, it got hillier, it got more challenging. Um, last year, the course was essentially the same as the year before, as sort of the first time that we reluctantly did that at the behest of the county. This year, it's very similar, but we've made some significant changes to the beginning because we think the beginning is going to be a full on race from mile one on. So the course has changed to adapt for that, mostly for the safety of riders getting into the first dirt sector that will come a little bit later than it normally does, and it'll be more spread out. Uh, but overall, there's this like evolution that continues, and 2020 will be no different. Different course, different racers, uh, depth of field, depth of prize purse, uh, depth or complexion of storytelling that will be shared on the backside. So now, though, for 2020, there's two events, and that's a little oh, yeah. farther down. But before we even get into that conversation, because uh, tonight's you know about the past event but what can you kind of like put out there as far as you know what that event could look like you know next year what the second event well we haven't announced it so i don't really know what you're talking about but i think if if i were to guess what you're talking about there's a an event in Asheville that is slated for august 30th it's slated to be 146 miles super challenging but not but different than here like more punchy climbing like you would have in belgium not long climbs like black canyon but just this overall like undulation that just wears people down a lot of gravel a lot of technical stuff you know similar road to gravel road to dirt ratio probably 50 some odd miles of difficult dirt technical dirt and then a lot of road so keeping that balance and that dynamic the structure of which is meant to freak people out so they get freaked out like what tire do i use well okay how much road how much dirt so then what amount of rubber do i need and then what kind of gearing what's the climbing like is it 23 percent like double peak is it just 16, which I can handle? So what gearing do I go with? Do I do disc brakes or do I not do disc brakes? Am I allowed to use my e-bike? No, you're not. Um, there's all these questions and people are conflicted with what to use and that's exactly what we want. We want them second guessing their gear all the way up until the start gun goes off. Perfect, well I think, uh, yeah, we'll keep wraps on that one, but uh, is it beer time? Beer time yet? Tequila and beer. Tequila and beer. Have you ever mixed tequila and beer? I think we're going to right now. All right, let's go do that. All right, Mr. Jake Ornest, one of the, I'd say the main photographer, right, BWR? Now you I, I, go to I mean, photographer. <laughs> I don't know. You've been at uh, damn near yeah, all these. I've been at uh, starting in 2013. And I have shot every one of them since then, um, and led a, a team for it since 2015, uh, where we're we're the group doing all the the media and photos. Uh, this past year, I only shot the portraits. I was uh, that was my first year being a filmer on it. How many photos do you think you've actually taken for BWR, 
or been in charge of having people take BWR? Um, let's see, 2019, the final photo count that I had to <laughs> go through and uh, break down was 7,000. That was 2019. Just yeah. 2019 alone? 2019 alone, yep. All right, so tonight's the movie premiere for last year, which you got a big part of. But before we see that, where wh- what's going on right now? Where are we at? Uh, we are here at Union Cowork across the street from La Paloma, and we're doing a photo retrospective from all years of Belgian Waffle Ride. And you just got a, a great group of photographers work all on show. Nice. So, like, through the years that you've done BWR, you obviously it's on the walls. Like, what what have you taken away from it? Or, I mean, when you look at all these photos, you I saw you earlier setting them up and everything. Like, what goes through your mind when you like see all these years of you know of these foot, you know photographs that you've been out there doing? You know, it's it it's been kind of overwhelming in a way. Um, you know, when I started shooting this, I knew it was something big that that was going to grow, and I I saw something that I was passionate about and I saw it in Michael and so now as I'm going through and and looking through all these photos and seeing the people that have been here year after year and the way the course has changed and the way that uh, my photography has changed and and others that I'm working with it's just it's really neat to go back and see that and then find photos from six seven eight years ago of friends now that that you had no idea (laughs) at the time when you were shooting it and it's like oh this is such a great photo i need to get this to this person and it's uh that's been uh it's been pretty cool uh maybe i should maybe i did this two years too early but (laughs) but expect something special for 10 years (laughs) no this is awesome um what so you've obviously in order to see the movie tonight you've had a big part of that what a you know what are we getting ourselves into what what are people going to expect to see <laughs> obviously it's not going to be a straightforward yeah, you you know yeah. movie no no you know um i certainly have a way of of deciding to bite off more than i can chew sometimes and uh, i have a, a great editor um and and co-partner in in this film and brian jenkins as well as uh, guidance and and the ability to just do what we want um to a point from michael and so we made a goal to build this film around what bwr is to us and and put some twists in it without it being directed at the bike racer um i think this is something that anybody can watch and and they're gonna find some enjoyment out of it awesome all right well we're gonna watch it and then uh we'll catch up later and get that the post video awesome. interview thank you so much appreciate it all right so we ran into jeremiah bishop here who is what's your current role now nowadays i wear many hats uh i'm athlete ambassador for canyon so basically that means demo expo race trade show whatever they need me to do um you know I, I like to say i like to build a stoke and get people excited to ride um whether that's a demo event like outer bike or whether that's a race like leadville 100 yeah that's what i'm doing so um we've got a lot of events on the calendar uh i'm here in socal at canyon headquarters just a few miles away and uh yeah we're working on a killer event season um we got a really strong focus for some good mountain bike events mountain um bike of course is uh one of our best categories best selling categories and then of course gravel uh gravel's super hot right now and yeah we've got a ton of events on the calendar really looking forward to some of these new ones so you haven't done bwr i take it this is you're kind of new to the, the bwr scene now you're with canyon Kane's a big sponsor of bwr how how do you feel like from an outside perspective since you personally haven't done it but you obviously know about it like you know we're here at the movie premiere tonight like, how do you feel like the BWR, BWR is doing in this new space? I think BWR is a leader in the space for sure. Um, you know, you look at some of the early pioneering gravel events and, uh, man, I mean, it's it's really caught on fire, but only just in the last three years. Um, and then you had some pioneering events. Um, this one's now, what, eight years old? And then you had Tour of Battenkill. Um, buddy brian won that um back in the day um and tour battenkill has kind of spun itself off as a grand fondo it's kind of a little bit less 
niche, you know, a little less core, I guess I'd call it. Um, but this one's definitely uh, got a lot of media push behind it. Um, they really like sending the message out about what gravel is about, um, adventure on bikes. And I think that's a really cool thing. It's also just got a fun brand, you know? I think that's a, a thing that people gravitate to. Um, these events are different. I did a lot of research when I started with this athlete ambassador role for some of our demo hits and some of our races that we do. And I was looking online and I was talking with Jason O'Mahony with a gravel cyclist and I was looking at all the websites and man, there were not that many events last year, but now they're like hundreds and hundreds of events. I mean, there's gotta be over a thousand gravel events yep. in North America now. Things like Paris and Castor. I mean, that one's also been around for a long time, but then you got the new ones, the new kids on the block, like this uh, Big Sugar Gravel, yep. sold out in eight minutes. Um, so it's really an exciting time to be involved in it. And I think if you're a guy like uh, Michael, who's you know at the forefront of it and had been here before gravel was cool, yep. um, it's awesome. You know, Our event, though, a lot less, uh, public facing the Alpine Loop Grand Fondo has been going on for nine years. This will be our 10th in October. So we've got three KOMs that are gravel as well. So yeah, it's just something that we've been doing for a long, long time. And so it wasn't about gravel. It was just about adventure riding. Um, So really the gravel, I think the real story with gravel is how it's become popular and brought new people into the sport i think that's what's special about the the real boom that's happening right now it's kind of it's bringing like everyone you know whether it's new people you know former racers you know roadies mountain bike guys you know, yeah, yep. everything so uh yeah it's very interesting so like how uh you looking forward to the movie tonight are you expect anything like have you seen any parts of it or like you think you're maybe seeing get stoked come out here next I, year oh totally i mean i'm fired up to just see the the course and you know i got a little bit of blow by blow from eddie anderson mm-hmm. uh training buddy of mine and and brian lewis talks you know super highly about it i had a schedule conflict on the east coast that's the only reason i couldn't make it last year but i'm fired up to come back out here and give it a whirl i mean it looks like just a blast i mean i like long tough rides yeah. and big adventures so it's right up my alley perfect all right let's uh drink some more beer and watch the movie thanks